So, routing and switching. What is the difference? As you see in the picture right here, we have multiple devices and these do different things to our network. So, switching is basically happening on the same network, meaning that with internally within your own network, whereas routing is communication between different networks. And that is why you see these two devices, hub and switch, is on their own network, whereas a router is connecting them. So, what is the different devices that we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about a hub, a switch, a router, and a repeater. So, what is a hub? Well, a hub is a very dumb device. As you see in the picture here, you have probably seen one before, or you maybe use one in your own network right now. But what a hub does is basically just receive data and then send it out to everyone connected to the hub. And then it is simply up to the computers to decide whether they want to accept or reject this communication and these network packages. This means that if you are sending some information to user B, then if you have a malicious user in the on device C, then unless his computer rejects the information to user B, he will actually also get this, that information because the hub doesn't care who it sends to. It just say, okay, here is some data, and it just push it out to everyone. Then we have a switch. This is typically called a smart hub because it does a bit more than a hub. This one keeps track on the different computers and devices connected to it. It does so by making tracks in a, a table of the MAC addresses. We have discussed MAC address in previous sections. And this is layer 2 in the OSI model. So the switch will start to record what kind of MAC address is being used from the different port um, within the device and then it will keep track on what port a specific MAC address is connected to because then it knows that if some information comes from this MAC address to this MAC address then it needs to go to these two ports. But this will happen over time so when at the beginning of using a switch when you connect your devices it is simply just acting like a hub until it starts to figure out which MAC addresses belong to which ports. Then we have a repeater. A repeater is compared to routers and not routers compared to switches and hubs. It is used for making um, the signal stronger. And as you see on the picture right here, we have a repeater at the end of the range of this wireless network. And because we have this repeater, then it is capable of receiving messages from this computer right here and then enhance the signal such that it can re reach the computers that is actually without the range of this main point right here. And it can do, do so in two different ways. It can amplify, meaning that it just sp uh, smack the message out with more power and it can do signal regeneration, meaning that it tries to clean up the signal because when a message tra transfer either through the air or through cable there will be some magnetic interference magnetic el electric magnetic interference that will it at the end uh, destroy the package and that is why we have these these ranges because at some point the uh, device is simply not able to reach out anymore so by having this repeater it can enhance the signal such that we can reach a much larger area. So you can set these repeaters up on your network at specific locations where you want the signal to be enhanced. This can be where you have thick walls or where you simply just have uh, a too long of a path between your devices and your main router. For example, if you have your router located at one end of the house and you want a signal at the very end of your uh, ground, maybe in the garage or something, then you can use such a repeater. And at the ending we have the routers. These are the real smart devices and the ones that make all this networking possible. Because what a router is compared to a switch and a hub is a very very smart device. It manages all the traffic 
between our internally and the public network. So our router actually have two IPs. It has the public IP, which is the IP that the internet is seeing, and then it had, has a private IP, IP, which is the IP used by your devices on your internal network. And most routers also have built-in firewalls. This means that you can manage your firewall rules based on who is allowed to connect and move uh, packages to and from your network and the public. Whereas switches and hubs simply doesn't have such things. It will just uh, allow everything to, to happen. And then most routers also have what is called a DHCP server built-in. And what such server is doing is to um, make your computers have IPs because once you connect to a network as we discussed in previous lectures about IPs and MAC addresses your computer will only have a MAC address so it needs an IP from somewhere and that somewhere is typically from such DSP DHCP server which is built into your router so what your computer will be doing when it is connected to the network it will use this flow right here where we first discover we try to find where the server is located then th this is located probably within your router and then your router see this and says okay you need a new IP then it will make an offer use this IP because this IP is currently free and then you will just make a request your computer on this and say okay fine I can use this IP and then your router will and which has this DHCP server will acknowledge and say okay fine I will note that down and you are now assigned to this IP so this is basically how you get uh, an IP internally so now we have quickly discussed the four devices if you want you can look them up yourself and see all the specific terms maybe look up the devices that you have on your network in order to see what is actually uh, on your network what uh, configuration is possible within your router in order to, to understand this a bit better. So now we are ready to move on and I will see you in the next lecture.